the www.youtube.com slash Billy Younger Physics Solutions with a capital B for Billy, a capital Y for Younger, a capital P for Physics, and a capital S for the first letter in Solutions. So that's www.youtube.com slash Billy Physics, uh, excuse me, Billy Younger Physics Solutions with the B, the Y, and the p and the s capitalized i am here trying to solve some more physics problems i've got some more uh problems related to average speed just want you to see some of the nuances of average speed and some of the ways that the average speed does not behave exactly the way you want to and because a lot of different authors create a lot of different ways to try to make it a little more complicated uh, so let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you can see the problem that I'm wanting to work this time. So in this problem, it says, uh, I'm on a trip. I'm going to take a trip, a 300 mile trip. And in the first 200 of it, I'm going to drive that and it will take three hours and 38 minutes. Again, I chose kind of a little bit nasty numbers so we could make sure we actually have to do conversions and whatnot. So on a trip, I drive 200 of the 300 mi total miles in three hours and 38 minutes. A, how fast must I drive the remaining 10 miles to average 62 miles per hour for the total trip? And B, what was your average speed or what was my average speed for the first 200 miles? I apologize for that. Your instead of I obviously changed perspectives in the middle of it. So what was my average speed uh, in the first 200 miles. So I think I can keep those numbers in my head, 200, 300, 100, 62, 338. Either way, just in case, I'm going to go ahead and write them down in my open docs. And that's sort of the same thing you should do as well. Uh, you should always take the time to sort of write down what you know. And then you can try to... Uh, piece together the problem a little better as the problem goes on. Well, my pencil's writing, my pen's writing particularly thick today. I must have changed something. I have to figure out how that's going. So I'm just going to erase all of that, in fact. All of my, everything I already wrote just came out kind of crappy because I've got obviously way too thick of a pen. Uh, that's what I did. I see. I hit the thickness of the pen. So the data I have is 200, and I'm going to call that 200.0 miles out of 300. Point zero miles. That way there's no ambiguity as to how many sig figs we wrote. So I'm just making an executive change to the problem in real time. Uh, I want to say that that took three hours and 38 minutes. And I'd like to do as average total. I'd like that to be 62.0 miles per hour, which I'm just going to write as MPH because we should be pretty used to that by now. And part A is uh, S average last 100 is the question mark. And then part B is what was the S average for first 200. Okay, so now I've written down sort of everything they told me, everything they implied, that sort of thing. That's a big key thing with physics problems. A lot of it's about getting all the information they're telling you, as well as the information they're not telling you, but are implying. For instance, like I usually tell students, you know, when someone says they drop the ball, that generally means, hey, I let go of a ball and therefore its initial velocity was zero. And hey, that means the acceleration is going to be acceleration of gravity for wherever they're at. And if you happen to be on Earth, which unless they specify it otherwise, that's almost certainly the case. And you're going to use downward 9.8 meters per second every second for your acceleration. So those are just some of the things that they can imply just by making statements like 
an object was dropped. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing this and turn on my uh, actual open notes. Uh, normally when I share this, at least just about the first time every day, I try to share it and it makes me install something. Let's see if it's going to do it this time, if I can just jump right to it. Nope, looks like it's going to let me just jump right to it. Aren't we lucky? Okay, so now I actually have you looking at what I wrote down. And again, what we're shooting for here is we're wanting to solve this problem. And it gave me a part A and a part B. So I really, really, really want to make sure uh, I do both parts. But in, in all fairness, I really have no desire necessarily to do A before B or B before A. I am, in fact, going to do B before A just because that's an easy one to jump out at. So here's our solution. I usually don't write the problem in red and then the solution in blue. I used to go the other way around, but I'd already started it here. So we'll go with it. So let's just start with part B. With part B, what we know happened, they asked for what was my average speed for the first 200 miles. So I know that my distance, remember, average speed is distance traveled divided by time taken. So I know my uh, distance traveled was 200 point zero miles and remember i added that extra decimal point with a zero there just to nail down the sig figs uh, unambiguously again it wasn't originally written in the problem that way i'm not supposed to do that but hey i wrote the problem i do what i want <laughs> uh it also took a time t equals three hours and 38 minutes so i have to do something with that as well for instance t is going to be three hours and then 38 sixtieths of a minute. So this whole unit written as a uh, mixed number fraction basically uh, gives me the exact number. So I could use that, but I like to put it in a decimal form. And of course the whole number three is there. The 38 is smaller than the 60. So I know that the whole number is gonna be three and then I'll put a decimal point. And then double checking my work, I'm going to do 38. I'm going to do 38 divided by 60. I think I should get 0.36 or 0.63. I mean, yeah, 0.6333. So uh, obviously I used uh, basically two sig figs on the minute. So this should be six, 3.63. And carrying one extra digit uh, just for all intermediate calculations, it's always good to do that. So I can now say that the S bar uh, for first 200.0 miles is going to be equal to 200.0 miles divided by. 3.633 hours. And notice the units work out in miles per hour. So I'll say uh, 200 divided by that. And then I'll raise this to the negative one power. Uh, basically, because I my computer was already set up to have the 3.633 on top, and then I, I just typed in the 60 afterwards. So I just went ahead and did th uh, 3.66633 uh, and divided it by 200 and then flipped it over. And that gave me, in fact, a number that makes no sense because I evidently made a typo. So good thing I checked that. So 60 <laughs> divided by uh, 3.633. Oh, I see. I actually raised it to the negative seven power instead of the negative one power. So that would certainly make a problem. So uh, when I do that, I actually got 200 divided by 3.633. I got 55.0509. And that's MPH, which everybody knows is miles per hour, but it's much easier to write. Obviously, I really only had three sig figs because the top one had four sig figs, but the bottom one had three. And of course, when you're multiplying or dividing, you round it to the number of sig figs that the one that had the least had. 
So the one that had the least had three. So I went around the three, which means that could, should uh, round it at the zero. Uh, obviously that next number is five. So I would put a one there uh, if I rounded it. What I'm gonna do is keep that extra digit and put a five there. But since it's a five, I don't know. And someone else might not know whether that was a four that I just rounded to five or not. So whenever I have a five there, I always carry one extra digit. So I'm going to actually call this 55.050 miles per hour with both of the last two digits underlined. So that is, in fact, the answer to part B, which I can box off and then put a part B here. Now for part A, what they want to know is exactly how fast do I need to go on that last 100 miles to average the 62 miles per hour they wanted. So what we can do is we can take uh, 300 miles, which is the total distance. So this is part A. We, this is part A. Dang it, why does it keep going that? And we know that the distance traveled for part A is going to be a total of 300.0 miles. And we know that the average speed total, which I think I labeled with just a total, you got to label with just a total, is going to be 62.0, again, MPH, which means miles divided by hours. And that just leaves me with S average is equal to D over T tells me that T, the total time I should take on this trip, should be T equals D over S. So I'll slip in, uh, I'll slip in the three or the D, which is 300.0 miles. And then I'll divide by the uh, total average speed, which is 62.0. MPH. Now remember that's a miles divided by hours in the denominator. So the way you divide a denominator into a numerator is you take the numerator and put it over one. So I'd get miles over one and then you flip the denominator upside down. You find it's reciprocal. The reciprocal of miles per hour is hours per mile. So miles divided by one times hours divided by miles. The miles cancel out and I'm just left with hours. So that figure should come out right. I've calculated it already, but I'm going to calculate it again just to make sure I get the right number. It's 300 divided by 62. And that gives me, again, some god awful number that I can't see anything with this. Uh, 300 divided by 62. Yes, that gives me 4.83. Again, we should have three sig figs here, so... 4.83 is the proper number of SIG figs. I would want to round that at three. But in fact, I'm always going to carry an extra digit. The next digit is eight, seven. I'm just going to call that an eight and put an underline under it. And then I got to remember, this is not the average speed. This is the hours. That's one of the reasons why I put up above it's average speed A, last 100 equals question mark. That's to remind me, hey, I want this, I don't want the hours, and this coming up as hours is clearly not the right answer. So that's another thing good about the way I write down not only what the numbers are, uh, but what symbols they are. And specifically, if they're asking you for something, go ahead and make sure you make a letter or symbol associated for what they're asking you. Ideally, one of the symbols that the book used and put equals question mark. And then just before you go to turn in your, your answer, make sure that has the appropriate units and that is the quantity that you asked for. So now, now that I know the total trip should take 4.838 hours, I've already used three hours and 38 minutes of that in the first 200 by averaging my 55.0509 miles per hour. So I really got to figure out the total time I have left and use that to figure out the speed over the last 100. So first off, time left. So time left is going to be uh, 4.838 hours minus the hours I already used, which was 3.633. Excuse me, that one was not supposed to be ununderlined. This one was supposed to be underlined okay the the first three was not supposed to be underlined 
All right, so now I see uh, when we do subtraction, remember, uh, the one with the least number of decimal places dictates where the rounding is. So we see the 4.838 has two decimal places unrounded. We see the 3.63 also has three decimal or two decimal places unrounded. So we're only allowed to go to the second decimal place. And what's worse is I'm going to do four divided by three. And that's going to give us ultimately less than a whole hour. So we're going to drop our sig figs from three, meaning a whole number plus two decimal places, down to just two sig figs. But that's just the nature of using the sig fig rules as opposed to propagation of error and whatnot. So if I do 4.838 minus 3.633, I get 1.205 hours. And that's exactly what I got before. So that's 1.205, uh, and I've got a five with a flat zero after it using these digits. So I'll put a zero there and this and this. Actually, in this case, I actually did get more than one. So that, that worked out okay. I was afraid I was going to have a 0 0.205 or something like that, but I must be thinking of another problem I saw. So yeah, I didn't have to reduce this to two sig figs. It actually did come out to three sig figs. So that's good. And this is actually ours. Always remember numbers matter, and if they have a unit, that unit matters too. So you don't want numbers or symbols floating around with no numbers or units or other equals set to them. So now that I know how much time is left to spend on the last 100 hours, I can say I can now calculate the average speed, what we called for the last 100, so LAST 100. Oop, left off the T. So the last 100 would be distance divided by time. We know the distance is 100.0 miles. And we know the time is 1.2050 hours. Well, at least with the hours being greater than one, we know we don't have to average 100 miles per hour. So that's, you know, gives us some solace. So let's do 100 divided by 1.205, and I get an 80, whoa, all of a sudden I jumped and turned into, a, into an eraser again. I get 82. Notice this is a four sig fig number divided by three sig fig number, so we'll call this 82 point, uh, nine eight. carrying one extra sig fig. Clearly, you'd see that uh, when you actually round it to uh, one decimal place, which is the proper number of sig figs, it become 83.0. But the units are, of course, in miles per hour. So if someone wanted the actual proper number of sig figs, the final answer should actually be written S for the last 100 average should be 83.0 zero mph and that would be perfectly fine writing it as mph so that was a case where we split up the miles but not necessarily evenly uh and we see that we actually had to go a, a, a rather not necessarily safe speed of 83 miles per hour for the last 100 miles to get back up to a 62 miles per hour so uh, I would say it's probably not worth it to, to do that from a ticket standpoint, from a safety standpoint. But I have noticed, for instance, in Florida, they don't seem to care too much about what speed you drive. Uh, I think they'll have the speed limit marked often at 75, and I'll be doing you know, 78, 79, because I always think you can take three or four over the speed limit, and that's fine. Uh, and people fly by me like I'm sitting still. But a friend of mine lives down there and says literally every day at work, uh, coming home from work, which is about a 60 mile ride down that highway, uh, he sees at least one wreck that should have involved a, a fatality. So that might be what happened. It's terrible to hear. Uh, so I would say eh, maybe we don't worry so much about our or obsess so much about our uh, miles uh, per hour on average. Uh, it might just be best to be a little late. So I hope that helps. I'm going to stop sharing now. Okay. Uh, again, actually, let me start sharing one more time just to remind you exactly uh, where you can find my page. I normally like to start the actual document with it when you first open it, and I did not do it this time. So I'm just going to remind everybody that you can find me at www.youtube.com.
and this should be a capital T tube.com slash Billy slash or no slash but younger y-o-u-n-g-e-r and then physics solutions okay so that's where you should be able to find me uh hopefully that'll help uh i think i was sharing that with you actually maybe i wasn't let's do that again because for some reason i was acting very weird like it didn't share so share did this did this shared that came up this way okay so again that's that's actually uh what my youtube channel is it's actually www.youtube.com slash billy b-i-l-l-y younger y-o-u-n-g-e-r physics p-h-y-s-i-c-s solutions s-o-l-u-t-i-o-n-s notice only the B, the Y, the P, and the S are capitalized. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it helpful, and good day. I will see you again later.